wonderful to see all of your faces, all of you here today, all of you with us on Zoom. We're trying something a little different this week and we're overjoyed to be able to be present with each other even in this way of using technology. I'm gonna do my best to be understood. It's a little hard talking through masks. I think we all agree with that. It does get a little hot, doesn't it? So welcome to worship this morning. Let's open our hearts and minds to the presence of God. Let's open ourselves to God's love and care for us and invite him, invite her in. Will you join me please in our call to worship? Welcome in the name of God, welcome. God's love stretches wide ready to embrace all with love. You who are thirsty for the presence of God, welcome. May your thirst be satisfied. You who long for a caring touch, welcome. May you know God's love through the care of this community. In the name of God, welcome to all. Let us pray deeply of God's presence and share this grace with one another. Come. Let us worship. Help us to keep a clear mind and a firm heart. 
We pray to hear the promise and calm that lives at the heart of your being. We pray to recognize how that same voice lives in us. When we choose the braver path of love, let us know that we live in you. We pray to turn away from worldly riches and toward inner joy. You, O oh God, long for a world in which the last shall be first, in which the lowly are cared for. We trust in your vision and long to make it so. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite all of us to offer prayers of concern, any joys that we want to lift up. For those of you on Zoom, you'll need to speak clearly and loudly for everyone to hear. to give thanks today for the opportunity we have to all be together in this way. I want to thank all of our new officers for being here today to be installed as officers of Grace Presbyterian Church and to thank them for their willingness to serve and their commitment. God, in thanksgiving, hear our prayer. I'd like to give thanks for the wonderful neighborhood I live in, for the neighbors who shop for each other or care for each other and keep track of each other. It's a wonderful thing. Did you all hear? Lee, sorry? Lee would like to give thanks for all of the people who shop for each other, who care for each other, and what a wonderful thing that is. God, in thanksgiving, hear our prayers. So prayers, we ask prayers for Judy Ann's friend Eleanor, who fell and broke her elbow, who suffers from dementia and is confused um, and frightened being in the hospital. And so we ask for her healing and we ask for all of the expertise of the medical personnel who are attending to her and especially for their understanding and their patience that they might help her to be less afraid in such a strange situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Is that Marie? We lift up prayers for Marie, just for better sleep, and especially for her healing um, and for her depression. Lord. We ask you just to be present with her at all times, walking beside her, that she might sense your presence and know that, that her depression is manageable. And she does that very well indeed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hi, this is Bill. I know that you have prayers for my African American granddaughter, Shana, who is verbally, verbally, extremely abused. While she was walking between our home and the library. And we just really have kind of prayers for for Kevin and prayers for the idiot that did that to her. And hopefully we can get him into the strength out where our country can be corporate and have a fix it. Absolutely, Bill. Thank and you. Thank you, please, for the granddaughter, Kevin. And we have also we have uh, uh, two other African American granddaughters and one great granddaughter. So thank you so much. So we lift up prayers for Bill's granddaughter, Kenra. Um, we especially ask prayers for her healing after hearing abusive things, sayings hurled at her. We also lift up the persons doing 
the, the speaking that they might find some healing and understanding. And Lord, we ask too that we might heal this country and the abuses that we perpetrate on each other simply because we're different. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Thank you, Marianne. We lift up uh, prayers uh, for those who are passing, um, passing away, and especially for your friends and, and her son. Um, it's a very difficult time to experience health challenges of this kind, especially when we can't be there and be present with our loved ones and caring for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. This is Sandy. Uh, I'd like prayers to my brother Bob, who was diagnosed with cancer. Prayers for healing and listening to the doctors. Absolutely. Lord, we ask for your, your understanding and your presence with Bob and his family, and especially with Sandy and her family. We ask for healing for Bob. Cancer is with us very much in the city as part of our culture, and Lord, we ask for a cure, but most especially, we ask for healing for Bob. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hi, this is Barbara. I'd like prayers for everyone who, um, they're returning to work this week, and um, prayers for um, a safe environment and their health. Absolutely. Thank you, Barbara, and let's lift that up for everyone. Uh, anyone returning to work, we're concerned, right? We're, we're all a little frightened um, because we, are, we still have a virus with us. We still uh, are waiting for a vaccine. And in that context, Lord, we ask for safety and health of everyone returning to work and not returning to work. Most especially, we simply ask that we we continue to be vigilant and keep our social distance, wear our masks, do what is necessary to help and care for each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'd like to uh, uplift and acknowledge wisdom to all the scientists and medical personnel to find the vaccine and to have all everything needed so we can move forward with our lives and I also want to be thankful to all the frontliners of our healthcare system that have been given so much. Absolutely. Thank you, Amy. We definitely want to lift up our healthcare workers who have done so much on the front lines caring for people, but especially to want to lift up the scientific community that the Lord will be present with them and be of influence with them and do all that he possibly can, he, she possibly can, in influencing the outcome of their research. We pray for a vaccine soon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. All these prayers we lift up to you, gracious God, because we know that you hear them and that you answer them. We are grateful for all of us together today to be able to lift up these prayers and we especially thank you for being present to hear them. We are born in love and we live in love. Each day, the spirit of love speaks anew and guides in a love that transcends the world's coldness and fear.
be with you. Let us share Christ's peace with each other. I'm sure you have. What do we call this? 
a welcome mat. Exactly. We call it a welcome mat. And why do we have a welcome mat? Why? Where, where do you usually see one, for instance? Outside the door. That's right. Usually your front door has a welcome mat, right? And so I can think of a couple of reasons we have a welcome mat. Why do we have a welcome mat? Well, yes, for one thing, mom and dad really appreciate it when you wipe your feet before you come in the house. Leave all that dirt and mud outside, right? But another reason for having a welcome mat is so that visitors to our home are assured of welcome. We're telling them they're welcome in our home. So what does welcome mean? What do we do when we welcome someone? Welcome, it's a warm and friendly way of receiving people, is it not? It's a warm and friendly way to receive people. So I guess the question in my mind is, are people always welcome in our home? What I mean by that is, if they have, uh, if their skin is a different color from ours, are they welcome in our home? Or if they don't have as much money as we do, are they welcome in our home? What about, what about as a church? How welcoming are we as a church? Do you think we make everyone feel welcome in our church? Um, do we speak to visitors and let them know that they're welcome? Or if someone comes to church dressed a little differently, let's say they look like someone who lives on the street. They may even smell a little bit. Do we welcome them? Or what if they think differently or express a different opinion from our own? Do we listen to what they have to say? Do we welcome them? Jesus said, whoever receives you, receives me. If we do not welcome others, we do not welcome Jesus. We wouldn't do that, would we? So, let's put out a welcome mat. And let's make sure that we mean it. Will you pray with me? And repeat after me. Dear God, help us to remember to welcome others to our church the same way that we would welcome you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for being here today. If you hang around for a little bit yet, We're all going to enjoy some fellowship after worship today. So stay with us. Our gospel lesson today is from Matthew chapter 10. I'm trying to keep my mask up and I keep falling down. Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Reverend John Buchanan, former pastor of Fourth Presbyterian Church in Chicago, once told the story of a church in Chelsea on Ninth Avenue in Lower Manhattan called the Church of the Holy Apostles. The congregation had slowly dwindled to about 200 members who were finding it difficult to maintain their beautiful landmark building. And then a new young rector suggested that if Holy Apostles was going to close its doors, it might as well do some good before then. 
So in October of 1982, says Buchanan, they launched a free lunch program in their mission house. 35 homeless people came, but the program grew and then other people became interested and they gave money. And by the mid eighties, they served 900 lunches daily and burst the seams of the mission house. And then in 1990, during roof repairs to the main sanctuary, a fire broke out. The damage was extensive, but they had adequate insurance to make repairs. But in the process of making their repairs, they decided that maybe they didn't need all those pews nailed down in the sanctuary floor. And if they were to, to leave the sanctuary floor clear, then they could use that worship space, which went unused Monday through Friday, they could use that for the lunch program. And that's what they did. Every day, volunteers set up tables to feed the hungry in their sanctuary and do most of the cleaning and serving, writes Buchanan. The rules are simple. No overt proselytizing and no one is turned away. You get a ticket in the mission house, enter the sanctuary to eat, and if you're still hungry, go outside, get back in line, get another ticket, and come and eat again. Since 1982, they have served 9,929,600 meals, serving some 1,200 meals a day, and offering other support such as health and referral services. Their budget is now roughly $3 million, or a little under $10,000 a day. The money comes from members, local businesses, grants, government, foundations, and the city of New York. During this season of the pandemic, they have expanded the food pantry hours and continue to serve approximately 800 hot meals to go every day. Buchanan quotes their former associate rector, Elizabeth Maxwell, who said, they do it because Jesus said to feed the hungry. There's no more to it than that. Jesus told us to take care of the poor and hungry and those in prison. He said, as you have done it to the least of these, you have done it to me. That message could not be more clear. We at Holy Apostles feel we have a Sunday-Monday connection. The bread and wine of the Eucharist we share on Sunday becomes the food we share with our neighbors during the week. We believe that our job as Christians is to meet Jesus in the world. We meet him unnamed and unrecognized in the guests who come to the soup kitchen every day. Whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, none of these will lose their reward, Jesus says. At the heart of the gospel is a simple moral mandate, says Buchanan, unconditional kindness. A cup of cold water for the thirsty, food for the hungry, clothes for the naked. Hospitality is the practice of welcoming the stranger, the needy, the distressed, even your enemy, no questions asked. Hospitality is the practice by which the church stands or falls. God calls us to hospitality because God's goal for all creation is a kind of homecoming, a welcoming, and a receiving. In her book, Beyond Belief, Princeton University professor Elaine Pagels says Jesus' words are the basis for a radical new social situation based on the value and dignity of every human being. It's a vision of kindness, compassion, gentleness, and peace. And our job as the body of Christ is to keep that vision alive 
and clear and present in the world in this time, in this place. Sometimes, discipleship requires significant personal sacrifice. But other times, it's no more than offering a cup of cold water to someone in need. Or as commentator David Lowe's writes, it might be offering a hug to someone who is grieving, or a listening ear to someone in need of a friend, or a ride for someone without a car, or volunteering at a local food bank. Discipleship doesn't have to be heroic. It can also be hundreds of small acts of devotion, tenderness, and forgiveness that go largely unnoticed, but tend the relationships that are most important to us. According to Jesus, there is no small gesture. Anything done in faith and love has cosmic significance for the ones involved and indeed for the world God loves so much. This reminds me of a story called The Star Thrower by Lauren Isley. It goes something like this. Once on ancient earth, there was a human boy walking along a beach. There had just been a storm and a starfish, or actually many starfish, had been scattered along the sands. And the boy knew that the fish would die, so he began to fling the fish to the sea. But every time he threw a starfish, another would wash ashore. An old earth man happened along and saw what the child was doing. And he called out, boy, what are you doing? Saving the starfish, replied the boy. But your attempts are useless, child. Every time you save one, another one returns, often the same one. You can't save them all, so why bother trying? Why does it matter anyway? The boy thought about this for a while, a starfish in his hand, and then he answered, well, it matters to this one, and then he flung the starfish into the welcoming sea. Whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, says Jesus. God's love incarnate. Thanks be to God. Amen. So today, we have the privilege of installing officers to serve this congregation uh, for a term and we are grateful to all of them for being here today to be installed. The Apostle Paul reminds us in his letter to the church at Corinth that God gives us unique and diverse spiritual gifts so that together we become one body of Christ serving God in the world. So let us share Paul's words responsibly. There are different gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same God who achieves God's purpose through them all. Each one is given a gift by the Spirit to use it for the common good. Together, we are the body of Christ and individually members of Him. We are all called into the Church of Jesus Christ by baptism, and marked as Christ owned by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling, to be servants of our servant Lord. Within the church, some are called to particular service as deacons, as ruling elders, and as teaching elders. Ordination is Christ's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among us, providing for ministries of caring, compassion, and governance. Will our deacons and ruling elders to be installed? Please stand as your name is called. 
Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon your servants whom you called through baptism as your own and marked as your own. Grant them the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Give them a spirit of truthfulness that they may show the compassion of Christ in the actions of daily living and rightly govern your people. Give them the gift of your Holy Spirit to build up the church, to strengthen the common life of your people, and to lead with compassion and vision. In the walk of faith and for the work of ministry, give them gladness and strength, discipline and hope, humility, humor, and courage, and an abiding assurance of your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Judy Ann, Amy, Kathy, you are now installed as deacons, and Rob, Jim, and Lee, you are duly installed as ruling elders in the Church of Jesus Christ and for Grace Presbyterian Church. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. Amen. Amen. And thank you all for being here. This is so challenging. Trusting in the steadfast love of God requires us to invest our whole selves from the depths of our souls and with the entirety of our hearts. Now is the time to share what we have been given. This is the place to welcome the Spirit of Christ. With our whole selves, let us present what we have received from God back to God. Thank you for sending your offerings to make a great difference to our church's work in the world. Thank you, too, for remembering the two cents of the offering, which goes toward upper knees.
a braver faith as a testament to God's welcome and grace. Look for life not in the promise of status or fame, but in the still small voice of radical love. Go in peace, listening to the voice of God amid the noise of the world, offering nourishment to neighbor and stranger, and remembering the love of a humble but mighty God. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.